you will never have an infinite number of balls. Before we get into the topic of today's video, in my last video, I added a dash to the player, and I got a really interesting question from Adrian in the comments. When the player is not moving, the player is not able to dash. Let's make it so that the player is able to dash from a stationary position. Presently, we're adding the dash based on the player's velocity and reducing the speed after the dash is performed as we did for the movement. If we want to make the dash independent of the player's velocity, we first need to decide what direction we're going to perform the dash. We can do this by getting the mouse position and subtracting the player's position from it. Since the script exists on the player, we can simply use self.position to get the position of the player. Next, we normalize the dash direction and set the velocity equal to the dash direction multiplied by the dash speed. Then we reduce the speed after the dash is performed as we did for the player movement. With that done, let's move on to creating a projectile. First, we right click on the root folder and add a new folder and call it projectiles. An area 2D is perfect for our projectile. We click on add other node and search for area 2D. We can rename the area 2D to projectile. Next, we see a collision shape 2D is required for the projectile. We search for a collision shape 2D and add it to our scene. A collision shape requires a shape to be added, but first let's add a sprite 2D to define the shape. Let's move the collision shape 2D above the sprite 2D so it's easier to see in the scene. We can add our bullet texture to the Sprite 2D. Now let's rotate it 90 degrees. We can then choose our collision shape. I'm going to choose a capsule shape 2D. We can increase the shape size by dragging these pink handles. Let's also rotate the shape 90 degrees to match the sprite. Now let's add a script to the projectile. We do this by clicking on the add script button. Let's rename the script to player projectile and click create to create the script. We won't be needing the ready function. Then we add an export variable for speed and set it to 5000. In the physics process delta, adjust the, its position by making the position equal to transform.x multiplied by speed multiplied by delta. We can now save the script and save the scene. If we run the scene, we can see that the projectile moves to the right. But there's just one problem. This projectile never gets deleted from the scene. And in a game that may have hundreds of projectiles, this is not very useful. To fix this, we can add a timer node. We search for timer and create a timer node. Then rename it to lifetime. We leave the wait time at one second and check one shot. In the node signals, we connect the timeout to the projectile script. We can see a function on lifetime timeout is added. We can then add Q3 to delete the projectile.
let's make a few different types of projectiles for our player to shoot. First, let's make the three-way shot. We right-click on the player projectile and click Duplicate. Let's call this one three-way shot. We can now start editing the properties of the three-way shot. First, we select the Sprite 2D and in the inspector, in the canvas item section, under visibility, we click on the self modulate and change the G value to zero. That will change the Sprite 2D color to pink. Next, we can add a Node 2D child to the scene. We can call this three-way shot. Then we right click the three-way shot node and make scene root. We can then right click on the projectile and click duplicate or use control D. In the transform section in the inspector we can change the rotation to 30 degrees. Then we right click the projectile and duplicate again. Under the transform section in the inspector we can change the rotation to minus 30 degrees. And that's it for our three-way shot. Now for the plasma surge projectile. The plasma surge projectile is a plasma projectile that starts off in a plasma ignition shell. When it launches, the shell evaporates, releasing the plasma that steadily increases in size over time. Let's now create the plasma surge projectile. We will do this by duplicating the player projectile one more time. We will call this plasma surge. With the sprite 2D selected, in the inspector, under canvas item visibility, we change the self modulate color to yellow. We remove the player projectile script by clicking the remove script icon, then add a new script called player projectile plasma. We will need an export variable for speed and vector two variables for start size and end size. We will also need a variable for the current size. In the ready function, we set scale equal to start size and current size equal to start size. In the physics process delta function, we move the projectile as we did before. And to change the size, we use the current size is equal to the loop between the current size, the end size, and delta. Then we set scale equal to current size. On lifetime timeout, we queue free to remove the projectile from the scene. Let's debug this by printing the size to the console and running the scene. We can see that the size does increase, but as it does, the amount it increases by reduces, and this goes on for infinity. That is because by using the loop function with delta, we create what is called a super task. Simply put, as delta runs, we increase the size and it will never reach its maximum size since the end limit is delta and delta does not stop running while the game is running. The bigger question now becomes, so what? Who cares? You will never have an infinite number of balls and you will never have a large enough urn to hold all of them. A big shout out to Hamsterbyte for introducing me to this concept and helping me with the code. And to Vsauce for making an excellent video on the topic. Links to their channels are in the description. Let's take a closer look at the script. We add a variable duration equal to 10 and a variable fraction equal to zero. In the ready function, we set scale equal to start size and the current size equal to start size. 
In the physics process function, we use the clamp function to ensure that the projectile stays within the size range. We move the position of the projectile as before, and this time we set the current size equal to the loop between the current size, the end size, and use the fraction as the duration. Then we set the scale equal to the current size. And as before, on lifetime timeout, we queue free to remove the projectile from the game. Now, if we run the scene, we can see that the size reaches its maximum size. Now let's work on firing the projectile. In the player scene, we will add a marker 2D as a child of the player. And call it Gun Offset. And position it to the front of the player where we want to fire the bullet. Next, we add a timer node and call it cooldown timer. And lastly, we need a node 2D and rename it to player weapon changer. Next, we add a script to the player weapon changer. We can use a weapons array to store the projectile scenes. In here we add preloads to instantiate the weapon projectiles into the scene. We separate each projectile with a comma. We can simply drag the projectile scenes into the preload to add them. We will need a couple of variables. First, a current weapon index and set it equal to zero. Zero will be equal to the first preload in the weapons array. Next, we will need a variable current weapon and set it equal to the weapons array current weapon index. In the ready function, we set the current weapon equal to the weapons array current weapon index. Now would be a great time to set up our player input. We go to project, project settings, input map. I have already set up the shoot, switch weapon up and switch weapon down player input. Let's delete the switch weapon down so I can show you how it's done. First, we add a new action called Switch Weapon Down. Next, we click Add. To add an event, we click the plus button here. Then we press the key that we wish to use. In my case, I will press the Q key. Then we click OK to register the event. With the input set up, now it's time to create the shoot function. In the shoot function, we set a variable p equal to the current weapon dot instantiate. Then we use owner dot add child p to add a projectile to the scene. We set the position of the projectile by using p dot transform equal to dollar sign gun offset dot global transform this will set the position of the projectile and last we start the cooldown timer an easy way to get the location of the cooldown timer is to simply drag it into the script this is possible because the cooldown timer and the script exist in the same scene 
we can do the same for the gun offset. Now let's set up the switch weapon function. The switch weapon function will take in a direction variable. We set the current weapon index plus equals direction. And if the current weapon index is greater than the weapons dot size minus one, the current weapon index is equal to zero. And if the current weapon index is less than zero, the current weapon index is equal to the weapon size minus one. Then we say the current weapon is equal to the weapons array current weapon index. If all of this is confusing, let me explain it like this. We set up a weapons array, and in this weapons array, we added elements. Each element is given an index number starting from zero. We assign the current weapon index to zero, and we will use the direction variable to navigate up and down the array by adding or subtracting one to or from the current weapons index. Since the weapons that size equals three elements, we will need to subtract one from the total size to get the current weapon index to prevent errors due to exceeding the highest index number, which is two. And since the weapon index cannot be less than zero, we will need to wrap the function to keep the indexes within the bounds. Therefore, if the current weapon index is greater than the weapons.size minus one, the current weapon index will be set to zero. And if the current weapon index is less than zero, we set the current weapon index back equal to the weapons.size minus one. Then we use the current weapon in the shoot function. And finally, we set the input. If the input dot is action pressed shoot and the cooldown timer is stopped, we call the shoot function. And for switching the weapon, if the input dot is action just pressed switch weapon up, we use the variable direction equal to plus one and we call the switch weapon function and pass in the direction. And if the input dot is action just pressed switch weapon down, we use the variable direction equal to minus one, call the switch weapon function and pass in the direction. In order for the projectiles to spawn correctly in the game, there's just one more step we must do. We add a, a child node to the player, right click it and make it scene root. Now when we play the scene, we are able to aim at the mouse, fire and switch weapons and move and dash. Thanks for watching. And remember, let's continue to make and explore these worlds one pixel at a time.